Hello everyone, Amanda here from ScreenPinMommy.co.uk and today I'm going to make a bit more of an in-depth card. Um, it's not as simple as the cards that I normally make, there's just a little bit more to it. Um, so we're going to be using the Cambridge Carol set which is absolutely beautiful. I love the oldie worldy feel of this. Um, I love the little scene and you can tell yourself a little story. We've got a romantic couple here and they're ice skating on the frozen river. Um, it's, I just think it's really, really lovely. So we're going to do use this set and we're going to do some watercolouring. Now I'm starting with a, a Tranquil Tide card base which measures, oh I've got a bit of ink on there. <laughs> Oops, 11 and a half by 4 and 1 8 scored in the middle at 5 and 3 quarters. Then we've got a foil card layer. I think this is champagne foil, and this measures um, 3 and 7 8 by 5 and a half. And then I have my stamping layer, and this measures 5 and a half by 3, I think. Let me check. I can't remember now. <laughs> three and a half by five sorry now this is not just normal whisper white cardstock you won't be able to appreciate it on camera but this is actually our whisper white shimmer card and it's got a very subtle shimmer to it it's lovely um and it looks almost like it's been sprayed with a shimmer spray but it's really 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 lovely for watercolouring so that's what we're going to do today and I'm also going to show you a technique using the lovely glimmer, pa um, glimmer paints and this one is frost white uh, and they do come in teeny tiny bottles they're in the autumn winter catalogue but you only literally need a few drops. It goes a very, very long way. It's awesome. Can I do a heart shape? It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so first of all, I have mounted my large scene on an e-block. Now that's not the largest block we do, but it's quite a, quite a large block. And I'm going to use crumb cake for my stamped outline. So I'm going to ink all of that making sure it's really well covered. I could use my Stamparatus to double check, but I, if I'm honest, I'm a bit too lazy to use it. <laughs> so, I put my card there, and I want to stamp it as close to the bottom of the card as I can so that I've just got room at the top for a sentiment. Okay, it's fairly straight on my block, and so I'm going to stamp it about there. Press down, give it a bit of a rub because there's lots of detail in that stamp. But there we go, as always with the red rubber, every single tiny bit of detail has come out perfect. I love red rubber stamps. Okay, now here is my sentiment and it's going to say season's greetings but we're going to do that after. So I'm just giving that a minute to dry. And then we're going to start and colour. Now I've got my aqua painters. I've got a selection of watercolour pencils here. Um, and I've also got some inks. I'm going to use crumb cake. No, I'm not. That's what I stamped in. <laughs> I'm going to use Sahara Sun. I'm going to use Pear Pizzazz. And I'm going to use Pool Parter. Okay. So... Give these a squish because these are the old ink pads, so I can still use them. If you don't, if you've got it in the new one, stamp it on um, on an acrylic, some of the ink on an acrylic block, and use that as your paint palette. Super, you know. Either way. Like that. Oops. So first of all, I'm going to just add a bit of water and I'll make myself a bit of a paint palette, and I'm going to do the grassy banking. And the little trees in the background there as well. And I'm just doing a watercolour wash. Okay. If you want to fast forward, you can. I've decided I'm doing a full process and I'm not fast forwarding. Um, so if you don't want to watch it all, you don't have to. Okay. I'm just doing a very subtle watercolour wash. I'm just kind of spreading it out, you know, like it's a scenery, it doesn't have to fill the entire page sort of thing. 
Let me just make that nice and tidy. There we go. So let's do the trees in the background here. And you can really feel like you're a bit of an artist. <laughs> I love it. I think it's hers. Okay. Just do a bit at a time. Although, you know, it doesn't have to take you forever. You don't have to overthink it. Although, obviously, the more time that you take over something, the better it looks. I think that's grass there. Love that green there as well. Love that green there. And you've got a bit of a tree going on here. Okay. So that's the green bit. And then for the church, I've got my Sahara sand, which is just lighter, slightly lighter than the... I can put my purpose as I were now. Move that out of the way. It's just slightly lighter than what we've stamped the image in. So we should be able to paint over the top of that nice and easy. And I just need a piece of scrap. Let me use this. Scrap to clean my brushes. Squeeze a bit of water in there. Dab it on there because I don't want it too wet. And then I can just quickly colour over my church in just a really light colour without losing any of that detail. So I don't feel like I need to have to go and add shading because you can still see all that detail. And I'm just going to very gently do my figures as well. Um, I'm not going to add any colour to them because they are quite small and if you add colour to them you'll, you'll lose the definition of the shape of them. So I'm having them so they're a little bit like a silhouette in the distance. And then just quickly paint over the bridge. Okay. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Alright. A bit of that there, and I'm going to add a little bit to the trees just to. I'm not even worried if I'm not completely on the lines, I'm just watercolour washing over the branches there just to add a touch of brown. Okay, right here. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to really quickly dry that off so that I can then add more stuff to it. If you dry it in between... If you do take time to dry it in between, then when you go in with your um, watercolour pencils, you, it won't go just like a big mush. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of definition. I should add another green. Is this the only green I've got? A little bit of definition with a what have I got here? Old olive watercolour pencil. Uh, I'm not too stressing over it. I'm just literally adding a bit of colour onto the where the lines of the stamp are already. I'm just following them. So it's really easy to do. So you just follow the lines that are already there for you. Uh, I'm just redefining them with a green. And just around the edge of the bank in there would be a little bit darker. This would be a bit darker. And we'll add a bit of dark there and a bit of dark there. A little bit of dark in the trees. A little bit of dark here. And across there. And re-add a bit of definition there. And then what you do is you get your watercolour brush again. And you just gently lift it. Gently add a little bit of water to where your pencil is and it will just blend so that you've just got a slightly darker tone in those shaded areas but you can't see any strong pencil marks. Okay, and it makes it really does like almost give a very cool 
effect there are some fun to work with you know you don't have to be um you know i'm just a crafter i'm not an artist but this is fun to play with i'm just adding a bit of depth and a bit of color okay there we go and then i'm just going to add a little bit of darkness is this the right one crushed curry no i don't want crushed curry <laughs> what's that one I don't want cajun craze neither i want early espresso which has disappeared hmm where it's gone is this it here we go i put it back on my shelf for some reason so i'm just going to add a little bit of early espresso watercolor pencil just underneath that bridge just to represent because it'd be a bit of a shadow there and just a little bit up here and I'll have a little bit on this tree just a little bit and then I'll just try and just add a little bit to the roof of this church just a right little bit not a lot because I don't want to spoil the lines that are already there it's just a right little bit and then again just clean off my brush on my scrap so it's not green anymore there we go and then I'm just going to blend that watercolour pencil so you can't really see any brush mark uh, pencil marks you know A bit. there we go right so now we're going to do just a very basic blue wash for the sky and then I'm going to show you how we're going to make this frozen river look frozen <laughs> so I'm squeezing my pull parter ink because it's an old ink pad again if you've got a new one you can use a acrylic block as your paint palette so I'm adding drops of water in there because I want that to be a nice wash yeah okay I know so I'm gonna just watercolor wash that so that it looks like a bit of sky it's just adding very 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 subtle color very subtle okay I'm just gonna quickly dry that with my heat tool so it doesn't run where am I? Where's my button? You can always pause if you like. Uh, fast forward, I mean. But it doesn't take very long to dry it. Right, so now we're going to, and I'm just going to use this scrap of paper to just dab some of that water out. <laughs> you know because I don't have kitchen roll or anything like that to hand I'm not uh, that organised right so I'm going to give it a good squeeze because I want quite a bit of that ink on that and then I keep forgetting which way the other thing because we've got the new ones so what I'm going to do now is I'm just literally going to drop um, am I even in shot about two drops there's no technical measurement it's like one and you'll see it and it'll spread out because it's mixing in with that um, water-based ink. Two. I think two will be enough. Oops, I've got three, but never mind. It'll just be more shimmery. Okay, so let me just clean off my brush. And then all you have to do is mix it in with the ink that you've watercolour. You know, your watery ink. Now you don't need to worry because you can just wipe that out with a cloth, it comes off, it's not permanent, it's not going to stain it, it will wash off of your brush, it won't do any damage, just don't get it on the actual pad like I have there. <laughs> yeah, so you're mixing yourself a nice little shimmer paint there. Okay. And then you can go in. Am I in shot? Shall I zoom in ever so slightly? And then you can go in and very carefully you can colour your lake and when that dries it will be shimmery and beautiful 
Okay. And it's a very subtle, very elegant shimmer. It's not like a cheap kind of brassy kind of shimmer. It's lovely. And what a lovely... It's almost like a little... It's more than a card. It's a little piece of artwork. And it, it hasn't taken me that long to do it. Um, so you could make these for special people or whatever. You could even put it in a little frame. Lots of things, just need to be careful that I don't make a mess of it now. Now we've done such a lovely job. Okay, get a bit more, smoosh it over because we want it really nice and shimmery. There we go. Um, what did I do to the top? Oh, that needs to be. That needs colouring in at the top there as well, doesn't it? I think that should be in some greenery colour. Now you could use that completely neat, straight out of the bottle, to put snow detail on things. I don't particularly want to because I'm doing something else for that. So I'll get a cloth in a minute and I'll clean that out. It's not a problem. Just need to shift it out of my way a minute. And I'm just going to quickly dry that off before I add what I'm having as my snow detail. And I'll show you. And get it nice and dry. And I don't know if the camera... There you go. Can you see how it's shimmering? So we've got an icy, a nice river there. Just does just about pick it up. So let me just give it a whack on the back so that it's um, not bent. Right. So what I'm going to do now for my snow detail? Don't worry if it's a bit warped. You can always just sit it between uh, under a heavy butt for a little bit, or you know if you heat it with the back of your heat gun. So what I'm bringing in now is I am going to bring in some of the Dazzling Diamonds Glitter and my Fine Tip Glue Pen, which I love. And I am going to add some snow detail to this card now. So let me just make sure that's working, it is. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add it to the contours here on the, where it looks like they've been skating on the ice. Bits on the tree, here and there, wherever I want it. So I'm just really carefully doing a line of th thin glue there uh, like I'm drawing with a pen and gently squeezing gently because you don't want loads so it won't look right a little bit on here uh, and then I'm going to just dot it all around the tree and I'm going to put some in the where it would collect in the V's of the branches there and then dot it Literally dot. Make sure it's still coming out, it is. Dot it all around. Those branches. Where the snow's collected on the bare winter branches. Okay. Now the other thing you can do is I'm going to add some to the top of that bridge. And I think I might add a little bit to the church. Just a right little bit. Not too much. Maybe a little bit there. Uh, maybe a bit around the edge of this banking. Just use it use it like a literally like a pen. Okay, that's enough. Put my pin straight in the nozzle there straight away and screw it on really really tight I've had this bottle two years and it's not dried up and that's because I put it away properly when I've done it's one of the very few things I don't put away properly right so now I'm going to add my dazzling demons which is the best glitter in the world I am biased but I'm also I do tell the truth um, if something's rubbish I'll say so <laughs> so I'm adding that, sprinkling it all over, then gently shake it off 
and you will have just, and I hope you can see that, just subtle amounts of um, glitter on that card, just nestling in the trees and on the bridge, etc, etc. So now I'm going to put that there. I'm going to set that to one side to dry a minute whilst we're going to do some um, heat embossing for the sentiment now. Now I've pre-cut this because I've used my trimmer because I very rarely get, get small sentiments straight. So this measures, uh, it is literally like one and seven eighths of an inch by three quarters of an inch or thereabouts. And then the silver foil card I've just cut so that it, it just layers nice like over. I'll put the exact measurements on my blog at scrimpingmummy.co.uk but there's just enough there. I've used a piece of scrap actually. So I need to use my dust budder, which I've dropped on the floor. I need to use my dust budder. Probably put a bit too much dust on there. I think I've gone a bit wild. And then I'm going to line it up just there where I can see it. Because I have mounted my stamp already. So I'm adding lots and lots of Versamark. I want it to be really juicy. And, oops! Really juicy. And I've actually found some tweezers in my daughter's bedroom. What she uses them for, I don't know, because she's only 11 and she doesn't do her eyebrows. <laughs> right, so I'm going to stamp this on there now and it's it's going to play ball and it's, it's going to be correct. Okay. So there's a tiny little bit of it missing, I'm not going to worry. It is what it is. You know, I can't be 